Hello everybody, it's been a while. Yes, a very long time, been extremely busy. But you know what it is, it's burnout I guess, but not the burning rubber variety. I'm here in Miranda, a Tesla store in Australia. And over here is something that needs no introduction, so I won't give it one. I'm sure we've ever heard the comments, the Cybertruck is never coming to Australia. Well, here we are, like I said, I'm in Australia. And um, Australia's surrounded by water, I mean enough water to fill numerous oceans. And here is a Cybertruck, in Australia. So, all those comments, Cybertruck's never coming to Australia, here it is. Um, was that an introduction? Shit, I didn't say I'd do, I said I wouldn't do that. Um, anyway, we know what we mean. All those people commenting, no that's not what I mean. What I mean is it won't be legal in Australia. So, while I'm here looking at the Cybertruck, let's have a look and see if it will pass Australian ADR requirements, which are online and easily found by anybody, really. First thing everybody says is, um, no crumple zones. So, crumple zones, that's an interesting topic because if you search the ADRs, I mean, you press Control F and do keyword search and search for crumple zones, you will find the word crumple zone simply does not exist in the ADRs. Funny that, so I don't know how it's not gonna pass crumple zone rules in the ADRs when the crumple zones don't exist in the ADRs. Basics of crumple zones are, if it's an accident, you reduce the force of an accident by, reduce, by extending the time of the accident as long as possible. To do that, engineers designing crumple zones, which are based around a crash test army, certain G limits, set speed and accident, stuff like that. So the engineers design the crumple zones to beat the ADR requirements set out for crash test army G limits. They do this other ways with things like pretension zip belts, airbags. And now with modern vehicles such as these and all other, you know, Teslas and most other modern cars, we have autonomous automatic braking. <laughs> Which means the crash specifies hitting a wall at 60 k's an hour. If the car knows it's going to have a crash, you can hit the brakes and you hit the wall at 40 kilometers an hour, then obviously you reduce your force on your arm. The crash test dummy. So there's that. Will the sub truck pass crash because it doesn't have couple zones? Not only that, it's um, class in a light commercial vehicle, so. Different rules again. Okay, so we also know that everybody talks about um, pedestrian safety. And it's because it's got sharp edges. Well, let's have a look. Okay, again the sharp edge thing. If the sharp edge, or the protrusion as I call it, is in front of the primary frontal area, I'm pretty certain this is a primary frontal area because it's, um, it's the front, it's the biggest area in the front, so it's a primary frontal area. Any protrusion in front of that has to be that radius at a minimum, not a problem. And yes, this is 301, full hard stainless steel too. I made it myself. So here. Um, there's no protrusions in front of the primary frontal area, so there's that. Okay, behind the frontal area, we have a radius minimum requirement of this. Again, I can't see any protrusions in front of the primary frontal area. So, based on the um, pedestrian requirements of sharp edges, it looks like it's gonna pass as well because there's no protrusions in front of the primary frontal area. Side bob here. There's been a few revisions to the ADRs regarding protrusions and vehicles recently which um, I'm updating right now. So yes, definition of a protrusion is in the ADRs right here. Now originally they had, I think it was a 65 millimeter circle, diameter circle, which is this size. It has now been changed to 100 millimeter diameter circle, as you can see in the ADR requirements right here. Now these requirements define what is a protrusion. Now, if you look at the front of the Cybertruck, you'll see there's nothing that really, there's nothing in the front of the Cybertruck that is defined as a protrusion. So as a protrusion, therefore, it doesn't need to comply with the minimum radiuses of the edges of the metalwork at the front of the vehicle. And also, let's cut to some footage of how they actually test the pedestrian safety in the Euro NCAP. Now just the testing on top of the bonnet. The reason they do that is to ensure that the, the human body when hit by a car, the head does not impact an engine block under the bonnet. That's why some cars you see in an accident, the bonnet will actually pop up at the back at the point of impact. That is so it provides a clearance between the pedestrian's head and the engine block under the bonnet. As we all know, Cybertruck, like most of these, has nothing under the bonnet. But yeah, you can't catch yourself on that, so there's nothing to catch a body. 
Yeah. Have you ever wondered why these break off so easily in almost every car on the road? Well, they should be legal. That's because if you hit a pedestrian and they hit the mirrors, they don't want the mirrors breaking your arms or tearing your limbs off. So mirrors break off at a light, light force. Hence, um, mirrors and stuff break off easy because that's pedestrian safety rules. Same goes for the guards too. There's that. So from what I can see, based on the ADRs for crash resistance and pedestrian safety, it looks like a pass to me. The right-hand drive conversion bit. So let's go over that so we can see. And so we've got the headlights down here and indicators. Indicators, easy pass. Headlights, I'm assuming they're going to be matrix headlights. Even so. Like the ones down here as well. That's all in software, so that can be easily fixed left-hand, right-hand drive. Total looks, hmm, actually, actually black steel. Anodized steel. No, I thought they'd be plastic covered, but anyway, awesome. So where were we? Yes, right-hand drive. Somebody mentioned before, there's no side indicators here. Do you know the Model X, Model 3, Model Y, all that sort of stuff has a side indicator there? Cybertruck doesn't, obviously. Now, there are requirements in the ADRs for side indicators to be seen from an angle sort of in this area here. Which, oh, what's that? I can see a side indicator up there. So, that might satisfy that requirement, which is pretty cool. Even though it's a weird American thing, I don't know why, but if that satisfies the side indicator requirement, then awesome. Obviously, it's drive by wire, so changing the left-hand drive to right-hand drive should be relatively simple. Unfortunately, because it's, um, you can't see inside it, but we've all seen enough videos on the internet of what it looks like inside, so I can't show you that because, you know, reflections and all. Yes, this massive white, I believe. We have, um, looks to be, oh, sorry. Looks to be a symmetrical frame there, the same on the other side there. So to change the windscreen wiper to the other side, needs to basically get a small cutout around here, mounting the wiper motor inside there, compete the other side. I think if you look at the, um, the castings and the framework, there's probably only very minor modifications needed to mount the, side, the um, wiper motor up here compared to this side. That side would have the washer bottle because on this side here is a windscreen washer bottle. That is a monstrous windscreen. So yes. Once again, in from here. How high is it? Okay, it's up to my just about my hip. That's actually probably lower than most SUVs, utes and four-wheel drivers you get in the roads today. So when it comes to pedestrian safety, I would rather be hit by this than a current ute. Here we are from the back. I don't know why, the Americans have this weird thing where they use their brake lights as indicators as well. I don't know, it's a very strange stupid American rule, but change of color of LEDs shouldn't be that hard because I think when you hit the brakes, this whole area here lights up, this turns off and leaves the central bar there and your brake light there. So maybe that could be changed to orange, an indicator is your brake light and that becomes a tail light in Australia, who knows? We'll wait and see when it arrives. Yes, up here, very hard aluminium. Yes, aluminium extruded. Constantine panel, plastic buttons. All pretty cool. Of course, we've got brake lights, obviously, up there. Indicators, reversing lights. Position reflectors, which are a requirement as well. Yeah, it's going to need a few changes for indicators for Australian rules, but that's about it. Nothing too difficult. Nothing that can't be done quite easily. One last thing I noticed too is um, I thought these were like just a haptic touch feedback button. They're not they're actually a physical button that moves. See? That's cool. I didn't know that. So anyway. So it is Cybertruck in Australia. So it never happened. It's here. Right there. In Australia, right here. And um, I'm pretty certain it will pass ADRs for Australian regulation for the right-hand drive because also most of those rules for Australian cars don't apply, don't apply to a vehicle that is class NA, which is this, like commercial vehicle. So, there's that. Anyway, I guess that's it. Um, thank you for watching. Until I get the chance to watch another video, the usual. Take care. See you all later. Bye.